Hey folks, welcome to the Fuacata Podcast. My name is Juan Navarro and I bring you all the Fuacatanes. Uh, this week I was on the road. Well, this weekend I was on the road. I was at a uh, Otaku Fest uh, here in Miami at the Max Center over the weekend. Great time. Really cool time. Um, as always, the people from Otaku Fest are super awesome people. The people that came, super awesome also. Everybody was really cool. Everyone was really awesome. Um, and it's funny because I used to really kind of hate anime cons that were like heavily based on anime because it was just cringy. It was just like big daycares for like fucking nerdy ass kids and shit you know and i'll be like oh my god but now it's like real like it's starting to be a little bit community um if i could say there was one thing that i could criticize the con about is that there was not much manga there was not much of like reading it's a lot of plastic shit and i mean i was there selling plastic shit too so i'm not trying to be high and mighty about it i mean everybody's there trying to make a mint but uh yeah it was one of the only things that i was kind of like pissed off about that was just like man you know like i wanted to buy some manga or some art books find some cool underground shit you know um i talked to these two kids um i believe their name is alex and nelson and i remember i think alex had a junji ito tote bag and i was like pointing it out i was like oh shit yeah yeah junji ito's the shit and i was like we're just start talking to mangas and stuff and like the stuff that you we'd want to read you know and we were one of the only shops that was selling some manga on there and i was just surprised to see nobody doing it and and nobody pushing it Isn't that, i think that's a miami thing superficiality of miami and our bullshit um i don't know it's 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 a lot of stuff so because of that i was just like i i I was kind of annoyed on that side of it artist alley was pretty cool but again it's like you know i I looked over and it's not like the art was bad there was some good shit but everybody's drawing somebody else's shit and i wanted to find like original stuff and i kind of wanted to like talk to them but it's like you make yourself unapproachable and then it's like i think there was one girl i liked her artwork and i thought it was really cool and she was like I walked up to like you know kind of buy like look at something buy something or anything and she was already like bad mouthing somebody and talking shit and it's like because these people are fucking stupid like she was being such a kind of a nasty bitch about something i don't know what it was i i really don't know the subject or what it was but i was just like you know what i don't want to talk to this person they're kind of horrible i <laughs> like i don't want to you know and i even thought of interviewing people on the the podcast and getting the microphone but just overall, people were kind of mad. I had some really good conversations with other people at booths and stuff, but it's about politics and stuff like that, local people, you know? But some of these people that came in for the anime shit, they were kind of this, like, way too into their own shit. They're all into smelling their own farts. They're more, you know, concerned about doing a Demon Slayer bullshit art and, and fucking, you know, uh, pretty much not uh, unoriginal fucks. They're just fandom shit. And I, I, you know, I'm not trying to fucking shit on that, but it's like, fuck, if you're an artist, like, it'll be, I understand if you have a couple of fucking things that are popular to draw people in, and then it's like, hey, hit them with the, I'm oh, creating this manga, or this is my original character, or something like that, but I didn't see that, so that was a little bit of disappointment, too, on that side. Um, but other than that, everybody else was very positive, a lot of people I met were really cool, um, a lot of kids a lot better, um... Oh my god, I think I have to do... Uh, almost every podcast this year has been so far has been a, a, a boogery snort on my part. So anyway, so we did do a panel at the con. And it was a panel with me and Kenny Calderon from Wild Inks. Uh, we've done panels before. I posted on here. We did a one at the con about, you know, comic and comic book making. We had a couple of people that were really cool. Some of them were a little on the spectrum. So, you know, but Kenny knows how to handle that and put stuff together. And, you know, it helps me. So uh, I hope you guys can ch- uh, dig it. I think we're going to have a good good time with that. And then I also did a little post at the end about some of the shit that kind of was bugging me this week. And, uh, and then we'll cap it off. And yeah, so it's a big podcast. There's like hour plus podcast. So go ahead. Enjoy. Let me know what you guys think. Let's go.
How are you guys doing? Uh, welcome to a Taco Fest, and this is the Indie Comics panel, right? That's supposed to be what we're doing. Yes, we're sir. Indie Comics. Uh, it's not the hang gliding panel, or no, no, no. I think, I think it's, the indie, um, it's the indie stuff. Fan dancing for beginners. Uh, if it is, I'm severely overdressed. <laughs> Uh, my name is Juan Navarro. I'm the editor in chief of Creature Entertainment, uh, also the owner of Goblin Size Comics over in Hialeah. Uh, we're a publisher here in Miami. We actually been publishing for over ten years. Thanks to COVID, we've had a bit of a vacation, but we're you know we're uh, be we're coming back in 2022 and doing a couple of things. With me is Kenny Calderon, uh, artist extraordinaire. He actually worked with me on a couple of books. Tell you tell the people about yourself a little bit, Kenny. Uh, like Juan mentioned, my name is Kenny Calderon. I'm the uh, owner of Wildo Studios. We're uh, we're an artist. We're a hub of artists that are that are very versatile in different dis disciplines, right? With uh, ranging from everything from comic art to like photography. Um, and like Juan mentioned, uh, we collaborated on a few variant covers for uh, Creature Entertainment, uh, principally on uh, the Tommy run of books which were really really fun to work on uh you, you got some there one i got tommy i got so uh that that was really really fun um also from creature entertainment i'm working on a uh series called uh chronicles of shara malazi uh written by uh keith wade who's uh who's an actor by the way that i couldn't i couldn't find my my, yeah. my copy of um, yeah, I, I didn't bring any yeah. this time either. Right, how's Keith? Keith's good, dude. He's he's um, working on a play. Uh, That's why he's been like... Oh, he's doing his acting thing. He's doing the right. act. He's, he's, he's a fest for you. Yeah, before, awesome. before what everything. up? Right? So, I, I ordered um, a, a symphony orchestra. Aside, aside from comics, uh, I've been under contract for the past, I want to say, three years with... Uh, with, within a partnership with Upper Deck Trading Cards, doing sketch cards for them under the Marvel license. Same here. Uh, as well as Juan. Um, and yeah, I do tons of freelancing. You know, odds are you've seen my work and didn't know it was me. Like, He's one of how, those guys. That's how like yeah. spread out I am. Yeah, so yeah, like uh, Tommy is a story about a little kid with an imaginary friend and he finds out his imaginary friend's a serial killer. That's kind of one story we're doing. And then um, the, uh, the, we also did other books like uh, Forgive Me Father, which has been optioned before as a, for a movie. Never got made, but we got optioned before by, uh, oh my God, I forgot the guy's name. Schumacher, Joel Schumacher. Really? Yeah, yeah that, was, uh, that was when they wanted to buy the rights. All right, my partner, John Ayua, who's a publisher, he wrote it, and they wanted to buy it for, uh, I think, the rights for 10000 and John and we said no because they wanted the rights outright. Because mm. I thought, ah, oh, cool, we'll show the rights and then we'll still have the book and we can put it on the front soon to be made a movie by Joe Schumacher. Mm. They're like, no, they want the whole rights, the whole thing. The kick and we're like, no. no. So John said no. We also produce a book called The Gun, <coughs> which uh, introduces different artists and everything else it's with Jose Varese. And then I did a book for some years called Zombie Years, where I'm on webtoons through there. And then uh, also we made a book called Ravenous, which is our werewolf book, uh, with work by uh, Jose Varese, covers by Patrick Riley. So they're all local artists that have like boomed up. Uh, we also like this cover is done by Jeff DeCal. He's done a lot of work for Marvel Comics. He's also a local artist. Um, and yeah, so most of the time what I do in these panels is I take questions from people and I also just riff with Kenny and see what you guys, uh, See where you guys are at and everything else. How many of you guys are making comics or plan to make comics? All right, the two in the front. The three in the back, just judging people. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so if you have questions about what you want or in the process or anything, but if not, it's just going to be me and Kenny talking shit, probably. Do you think that? Um, so oh, anyway. Thank you. <laughs> this is too early in the morning for a fucking panel. So that's like I'm a little low probably. energy. Uh, so one thing that I that I didn't mention also is um, I teach comic and cartoon art in a, in an institution called the Art Shack in the Uh and Juan also teaches uh, comic art and you know the art of story. Miami Dade College. At Miami Dade. Yeah, that's on occasion. Those are workshops I do some most of the time. If you're in a creative writing program within Miami Dade, 
If you're in the Hialeah campus, you actually see pictures of me. I don't know why they did that. That was like, that was. <laughs> I've seen them. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, you know. It's like, look, the fat guy. You know, like. <laughs> He's the kind of guy. Yeah, hey, look, the fat guy. He, he makes comics. It, it's kind of fun to see Juan standing at a podium. Yeah. With like comic stuff behind yeah. him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we both teach also. Um, we are going to be doing some projects out of uh, Goblin's High soon. I want to bring back the Drink and Draw. Nice. So we got because we have a gaming satellite, so there's tables and stuff. The drink and draw is pretty much come in, uh, BYOB, and then uh, and bring your sketchbooks, and we just hang out and draw. It's a good way of networking. We work with a lot of uh, artists, like I said, people that show up is like Jeff DeCow, who works for Marvel, Patrick Riley, who works for Disney, um, Nashmi Mar- Nash Marquez, uh, Andre Labrada would be here, but he actually had to go to the doctor. He's he's done stuff with Boom. Yeah, he Boom he's, Studios. He's doing a series for him. He does a series on web, webtoons. He actually worked on Hulk Agents of Smash, the animated series. So, and he's a high Leo boy. So he comes in all the time. We play games and shit like that. Uh, who else? Uh, I want to say, oh, Daniel Delitsky. Uh He's worked with a bunch of various artists. We actually worked on a couple he, of covers. He was together. on uh, Sonic, wasn't he? He was on Sonic. He actually Sonic worked on the Echo. Sonic. Uh, I forget it was like the movie promotions and some other stuff. He did like a couple of things. So yeah, so it's an eclectic bunch of different professionals. So it's a good way of networking again and finding out your, your what you want to do, where you want to move forward, and everything else. Outside of that, it's it's just good if if you are a creative, it's good to surround yourself with other creatives. You know, you mm-hmm. you know benefit from the osmosis. That's always good because sometimes it's good to compare notes, find out things, any little thing. Sometimes you know even like. Where to get art supplies? Yeah, you know, we were just saying a friend of ours, Tyrell Antigua. He's another underground artist. He's always giving people art supplies because <laughs> he'll be just like, "I don't like these pens here," and I bought fifty of them for some fucking reason, <laughs> and he'll just give them to you, and we're like, "All right, I got pens now." So, you had a question? Yeah, do you guys have like you specifically? Do you have a business card for that school that you teach? I'm Absolutely, I'm at my table. I'm I'm, I'm at I'm at nine twelve, so I'll nine hundred like from the beginning. I'm mm-hmm. a few tables back, and I'm right next to them. Yeah, so. And I'm here as a comic book shop because right now we have about four books ready to go, but we haven't published anything yet because printing prices are really high. So uh, we're just waiting for printing to come down a little bit before we start. Uh, plus conventions and everything else we're trying to see. Heroes Con yeah. is, is going to happen. So yes. So we're going to see how the next year goes. Yeah. So we, we had some new faces trickle in. Um, are you guys here for the... Uh, Indie comic stuff, right? The new faces. You're not? No, I'm not. <laughs> I like your shoes. Thanks. Uh, so. He goes to the store. He goes to the store? Yeah. Oh. So I was like, hey, so my boy, I'm like, yeah, let me see what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so he's just. He's he goes just, to the fan dancing class later on. Ah, uh, he's here for the fan dancing. Yeah. All right, so for the new faces, are you guys. Uh, are there any artists in the room? One, two. Those people writers? in the back are just here to... All right, finally. Uh, we got a writer back. Uh, that's that's, that's, that's yeah. one of your people. <laughs> one of my people. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm luckily a writer and artist, and so I get to... I'm also my worst freaking boss. Um, so I'm working on a series now. I, I do a lot of things through my blog and my Patreon and my Substack, and I have uh, different audiences on each. I do everything from horror to erotica to... Uh, cartoon, the animal cartoons, you know, and I just do, and so I'm coming out with an, a personal anthology, hopefully next month. Um, I'm pu- putting it out digitally, so if you follow me digitally, you'll have access to it there, and then the actual book will be coming out, so if you guys want, you can always follow me on Patreon, and I'm actually putting my lessons on there, I'm putting some uh, stuff on there, so if you guys ever want to, like, you know, read more, whatever, philosophies and stuff like that that I have going. Any questions for the new faces? Um... Okay, as um, anime is dominating the, re- the West, right? In terms of sales, anime is dominating the West. Is that correct? I think it's a matter Ooh. of perspective. How so? I don't so, know about so. dominating. In the, in, the publishing, in the publishing and printing aspects of stuff, there is a lot more out there. There's a lot of inventory. But when you actually look at sales, because there's a lot of places. Look, then the next year, so you know, Plays like Barnes and Noble and Bam, your anime section, your manga section is gonna get really small because it, less and less people they're gonna less buy less and less stuff because a lot of that stuff is returnable, and because it's returnable in the industry, they lose a lot of money. 
And so because of that, they kind of, so the, you got to be very careful because a lot of these bookstores are going to get really small soon. I know <laughs> that being in the book sale business. Um, I don't know. I don't know about dominating, but yeah, it's like definitely a strong factor. And I would say manga as a publisher, anime as animation, that's different. That's, uh, that's something that everybody's manga. clamoring for. Sorry, yeah. I manga. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, like, I think we're one of the only people selling freaking manga in this goddamn con, so... It's really sad. I, uh, I was telling somebody today that... Yeah. No, I think there's a bunch of fucking posers down there. Um, yeah. There's a lot of 100%. posers. No one's reading. No one reads what the fuck this shit comes from. 100%. And, and the way you could, you could tell them apart is you ask them about the manga. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I've had people come up to my table and, like, if I'm drawing something what may feel random, oh. right? Like, yesterday... Uh, there was a there was a, a kid that walked past my table and he was dressed as a hunter from Bloodborne. Now, unless you play Bloodborne, that would have went clean over your head. I said a hunter must hunt. He turned around and he and he hit me, you know, with one of these. He put his finger on his nose, and then we had we engaged in a whole conversation about Bloodborne because I'm new to like the Soulsborne games, right? Uh, I did a chibi Guts. So for, for those of you that are unfamiliar, Guts is a character out of a manga called Berserk. It's one of my favorite manga out there. All right? And probably top tier manga that you can ever read regardless of whatever genre you're into. Um, and he, he's an exhibitor. He walked past the table. He said, how much is this Guts? We engaged in a conversation about Kentaro Miura. He's one of my top five dead or alive. Right? Biggest inspirations for like how I do my work. Right? So, uh, getting back to, to your question, I don't think it's more so a question of domination. I think it has become more accessible over the yeah. past two decades. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, I'm, I'm an 80s baby. Throughout the 80s, anime and manga was real underground. Yeah. You had to like go when to. When Dragon Ball is like edgy. Yeah. Like, like Dragon Ball having Dragon Ball tapes was like, oh shit. Yeah. Like And the only way you could get those tapes is by going to your neighborhood comic shop who had them like yeah, on bootlegs. Like, you know, yeah, bootlegs. Yeah. Right? From the imports. And all of them did it. And that's how they survived the nineties when the comics imploded. So don't let them tell you otherwise. Yes. Just a quick side change. I'm from DR, so I remember back in the day going back on LimeWire and downloading shit. To my to watch it, yeah. Yep. And then just getting really That's how you completed 100%. stuff. That's how you That's finally how like, oh my, bro! I finally 100%. got to see all these. I remember Record of the Lotus War. I would I would I would download that. Look at some of you are like, what? You yeah, know yeah. Record of the oh, Lotus, yeah. Lauren? Oh yeah. That was one of the first like D and D inspired animes that I saw, and I was like, oh shit. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm a huge fan of 80s 90s um, anime because it was all hand drawn, the animation, everything. It was weird as shit. You know, now, it, it, I mean, now it's, it's more gory. popular and everything else. And a, lot, a lot of the older stuff is gorier yeah, 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 than yeah, the yeah, stuff yeah. you see today. You know, I had a, I had a conversation with, um, with, uh, with a pair of guys that were looking at the Ninja Scroll print yeah. that I had on the table, right? And um, yeah, that's another one that's like, you know yeah, or you dude, don't know. Exactly. Like, you know or you don't know. That was a so, video store. You rented it four or five times, you know. That, like, that Ninja Scroll FYI was the anime that got me into, like, hardcore anime, right? Uh, before that, I was into a lot of the mecha stuff. Gundam, um, Tekaman Blade mm. was the one that, like, really hooked me. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they aired, I think, the first season of that on network TV. Yeah. But as it got close to the end of that season... Things got really dark, and then they stopped airing it. Mm. So that's when I had to go into the deep dives and look for imports and go to the comic shop. And it's shop insane and because now you can like, you can oh, go man. to YouTube and watch it. Yeah, yeah. I just watched the uh, Darkstalkers because I was never because yeah. actually I had the episodes all of them put together. It's like an hour and forty minutes, and you can just watch it. I'm like, I never, I always saw clips of this shit. Yeah, I never saw. And, you know, again, going back to the LimeWire days, you got to sit there, click, <laughs> and then, like, I'm going to go to bed. Yeah. And, yeah. like, hopefully in the morning when I wake up, all the shit will be downloaded. So it, it's a question of accessibility. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's available more, right? Um, it's kind of like, 
back in the 90s oh. when uh, when uh, these guys separated from uh, Marvel and DC and started Image. Yeah. Everybody was trying to draw like the Image guys. Yeah. You know? So, it, it'll pass. It's it's a little it bit comes of a and goes. Right now. It comes and goes. There's gonna like, be different. There'll be a wave. There, yeah, there's gonna be like, right now. What you have is you have Hulu, Netflix, um, every single service clamoring to get um, anime on their on their service because they know that that's gonna bring people in. Um, you still have people like Attack on Titan just had a new season. Yep. And they're jumping on just with that. Um, but what the big thing is is when people like outside of anime will casually watch anime now. Yeah. And that's going to be, that's interesting. That's interesting. When we can get past, like, it being a funky, weird thing and being just everybody. I know people that don't watch anime, but they'll watch My Hero Academia. You know, they don't, you know, they don't watch, they don't know uh, 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 Studio Ghibli. They don't know any right. of those, but they'll watch, you know, um, you know Black Clover. Right, you know, it's like, like they're unfamiliar word. with the the cultural aspect of anime and where it came from, or or, mm. or they don't read manga. But like, say Castlevania, like maybe they're a long time gamer, you know, and they're fans of the 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 series. Yeah, like so, the so fact that you have like anime, uh, you know? what is Psycho uh, Psycho uh, the the volleyball one? Haiku. Haiku. There you Haikyuu. go. Haiku. Mm-hmm. That that was is gaining so much ground, and then luckily. I've read manga for years, and so you've seen, like, I've seen golf manga, you know, like, right. I've seen all types of manga, and it's uh, applicable. One of the things is the biggest difference between manga in Japan and comics here is they don't make manga for everyone. It's not for everyone. This is for young men. This is for young women. This is for older men. This is for older women. This is for families. This is, they purposely say, mm-hmm. all right, that's, a, that's like saying, hey, there's a Captain America that's just for adults. You know, and we're going for the adults. That's it. Not for everybody. Right. right. And that's where a lot of times American comics has a lot of problems because you either have the neckbeards that hate women who want to like don't like when a girl like <laughs> is powerful, right. or you have people that just look at it and say, "Oh, that's sexist." It's like, well, it's made for dudes. They want to look at boobs. Right. You yeah. know, there's yeah. always something. So I just say, "All right, this is for these guys. This is for that guys." And when they do that, so it's the same thing with anime. If anime can do that, I think it's going to be very interesting when. Again, your when your mom watches anime, how weird is that going to be? Yeah, you know, like that's going to be like I'm a water berserk. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. a water gods. We are gods in the spa. So I got a question for the both of you, for the writer side and the artist side. Okay. So I recently just discovered my passion right. in art, and I want to make comics. So how do you like? First of all, start writing a comic. Like, should you start reading a bunch of books? Should you start watching a bunch of media? Should you just like throw it out there and see what like sticks? Mm. Like, how would you learn? Ooh, writing? I'm so fucking envious of you right now. Because uh, <laughs> you're just starting. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? This methods. Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Oh my god. Well, well, <laughs> like, I'm, well, my methods are different up. from Juan's. Yeah. Right. Right. right? So uh, Juan. Like, well, first off, there's no one right way. I mean, every every writer, Neil Gaiman, in the he's hundred, one of my favorites, by the way. in the hundred plus uh, different projects that he's worked on, he says every time every comic book projects, every time he's gone to work on it, it's he says it's a different process each one. Mm-hmm. I had artists that I had to write a full script for. Mm-hmm. I had artists where I would just write literally a sentence per page, mm-hmm. and then like you know, and at times it was like faxes back and forth. Now it's texts messages. Oh. So it's just like however. If you're making your own stuff and if you're drawing, just make as much as possible right now. Right now, you need to get your muscles strong. Because once you get into, if you want to do this professionally, you need to learn to love being at a drawing desk. Okay. It's going to suck sometimes. Now, believe me, there's days I wake up and I don't want to do anything. I want to I wanna play video games like everybody else. I want to just watch TV. I wanna, the last thing I want to do is be strapped to the, to the thing. I did the con yesterday. I was here most of the day. I left. I went to the beach for two hours with my girlfriend so she won't be mad at me. And then I came back to the house and I drew for four hours and did a blog post. And then I went to bed at one in the morning and woke up at seven. Oh that's, and that's my weekend. So if you're doing this, you live this. Um, not saying that you can't do it casually. But uh, the thing is, is that and, and whatever big story you have in your head right now, this epic saga sucks balls. Because it's your first comic. It should yeah. suck. It, your first comic should suck. I tell people all the time. So do short shorts. Do eight pages. Do ten pages. Do twelve pages. 
get the idea out of you. And you'll see if the idea is good, you can go back and be like, all right, I'm going to make this bigger now. I'm going to do this. Zombie Years, I did 10 issues of Zombie Years. It originally started as a short story I did for an anthology for fun. And uh, the anthology never happened. And I had these eight pages. I go, what do I do with this shit? And at the time, web comics was big. And I said, all right, I'm going to make my own website. I'm going to learn how to code. I'm going to learn it. And I built it and I made my own thing. And I did it for almost eight years. And, and it's done great. And now on, web, on, on Webtoons, it's done great, too. So uh, we have like about 2,000 subscribers. So it's been fun. It's been awesome. So that's the best thing I can tell you to do. Just start making comics. And, you know, let it suck. It's okay. It's going to suck a little bit. The, the I, I saw you in the back. <laughs> Um, what I do is I, I try to immerse myself, right, in, in whatever genre it is. Like, homework is key. I, I you know, I, I work with a lot of uh, indie writers. Um, I, did, uh, I worked with a, a writer who put out a children's book that I illustrated, like, in 2018. So I, I try to treat every IP like it's Marvel DC, okay. right? Uh, so you have to immerse yourself, do homework so that whatever you illustrate on the page feels authentic and convincing, right? Um, like Juan, dude, I, I work 16 hour days. Oh my God. I'm up, like I do this full time. I don't have a day job. Right? Same here. I, I freelance. And I, then what? When, when did you make the jump? Three years ago? Four years ago? Uh, three years ago. Three before years ago, the right? pandemic. Yeah, but there was the pandemic. Before yeah, the and pandemic. I think I did the same thing three years ago. Well, I did the comic book shop six years ago, and that was like another deep dive. Like, Nick, when you finally say, I'm not going to work for anybody, dude, you check your underwear because you yes. you're going to poop yourself a little, um, which is normal. Um, I, I will say this. We used to have studios together at the comic shop before COVID. At COVID, everybody had to go home and work. But it used to be like I would pass by his studio to the way of mine. He'd have the, the door closed or throw it slightly jar. And I remember you'd have the PlayStation on with something playing, yep. a movie or something, and jamming. Yep. I'd go to my room, be there for two or three hours. I'd be jamming music and everything. Then I would like go outside because I smoke. So I'd go outside to have a cigarette. And I'd pass by his thing, and he'd be still jamming. And we're and it's funny because sometimes I go, dude, I feel weird being at the comic shop at one in the morning and two in the morning. That's gonna be weird. And it's our fucking cars with like other people's cars in the parking lot because we're jamming till two in the morning. Yep. Working, dude. I've slept in my studio. Oh my god. To me yeah, me too. <laughs> oh my god. That's a common thing. Right. They're like that floor looks pretty good. Like, you, you're trying to hit a deadline, or is it passion? Both. 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 Wow. I mean, sometimes, you know, if you're still, uh, still, I hate to say it's civilian, mm -hmm. and you still have your day job, right. so then you say, okay, I got, Friday comes, I got, I got the next 48 hours to do all these things I wanted to do. Oh, my God, yeah. So I got to, like, plow through and destroy yourself. And, you know, if you still have a personal life, if you have a romantic life, if you still have friends, you try to fit it in. This man's a father. Yeah. You know? So he has to, like, you know, fit a lot of stuff in. You know, you make that time. So then it becomes like, oh, I did this thing with my girlfriend or I did this thing with my son, mm -hmm. hung out, everything's cool. All right, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock comes it. when you're tired and your you're shoulders are going to bed. After that. You drink a cup of coffee, you put on some tunes, and you start working. Oh, my God. But, it, but the, the thing is that it, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. You're, you, you, when you're in the jam, man, and you're drawing and you're, like, in it, it's beautiful dude it's like the, the and you get those pages done everybody likes to show their stacks like look at it look at yeah. the stack of my bristol board or look at these pages it's fun it's awesome one, one method that that i that i do when i when i make comics is i i like to line up three pages at the very least on the table mm -hmm. right so if there's a new page that i that i just penciled i like to compare that to the previous inked pages right mm -hmm. to to so i get a sense for um the flow of the story, how my panel art is looking, right? Because I'm, I try to incorporate a lot of different influences in how I storyboard, right? Like with fight scenes, I like the fight scenes to feel like, man, you could see two people go at it like this and it's believable, mm -hmm. right? So where in a script, fight scenes could be described in like a paragraph, mm -hmm. that paragraph can equal like 12 pages. Right, because I, I'm like, I know that there's people out there like me, right? Like, if 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 the the dots don't connect, 
and it doesn't convince me, it's going to pull me smooth out of the story. You know what I mean? That's one of the reasons why I admire Kentaro Mura so much. You know, because you can see his development and how Guts would, you know, battle these different knights. You know, and even though it's absurd to swing a sword that big, right? Too big, too heavy. You know what I'm saying? But the the battles made sense to me. I was convinced. When he swings that sword, he cleans the panels. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have I have a policy that I always say if you're not having fun drawing it, people are not going to have fun reading it. There you go. 100%. So, a lot of times if you're not like fuck yeah, like you know you're doing those speed like Yeah. Oh yeah. So no, you're good. So you, you know just to just to finish that off, you I I immerse myself. Right. So I did a I did a the Chronicles of Grace Flynn with with Kafalson, who's next to me, right. right? And that's a pirate book with steampunk elements and a lot of like uh, like vampires and werewolves, a lot of fantasy creatures. Right, right. So I knew nothing of steampunk, nothing. Nothing at all. But I immersed myself. I started researching. I did homework. Right. I looked up stuff from the 1800s, how people dressed, how people you know got around, so that when I would illustrate the pages, it felt authentic. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, just you're you always going to educate yourself on the next project. hundred percent. I'm 100%. working on a western right now, and I've done westerns before, but because I wanted these historic elements in it that I wanted to write, even though I'm going to make it all up, I had to look into like actual history and be battles and be like, well, when did cowboys exist? Right. Like I had to like look at it and how did cowboys look at this? And it, and it's been interesting uh, going to. Um, the one thing too I would say about him, it's really fun. Like when you have your studio and you have a setup, this man's like Superman. Um, yeah. Um, um, Superman. Uh, idol that he has, like he has a studio it's set like up. It's like a Superman. Yeah, yeah. I Superman. have like various things around me. Like I get the studio. I have a thing where I just care. Like I hang badges, all the badges of all the shows I have, and everybody <coughs> likes looking at it because it's a hanger this big and it's full. Because I've been to like of all your inspiration. Same. Well, badges that I've like two hundred shows that I've gone to. Yeah. 200 wow. to 300 shows that I've been to. Um, I also have artists that I've, I thought I'd never meet. They're heroes of mine. And I have, like, they're signed artwork. And I have stuff that I did. So it's been part of the bonus of it when this is your life. Yeah. You know, that's the cool part of it. Yeah. There so, was a question so like, somewhere with, with, in the back. With, with everyone creatively, and this is for everybody generally, it's important that you surround your workspace with things that not only encourage you but inspire you. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So to do this full time... Right, you have to train yourself to to do it when you're not inspired to do it. I have a lot of naked people on my phone, and not for horrible reasons. <laughs> like, I, it's for figure drawing. Yo. I have poses and stuff. <laughs> so it's like my girlfriend, like my girlfriend, luckily understands that. But they're like anybody looking at me, like it's your fucking problem, man. They're like I'm like, no, that's a pose. I need it for a cover. <laughs> we we got to get the question yeah. in the back. She's been waiting for a while. Oh man, that's that's oh, cool. That's right awesome. There, um, like what, for me, I, I work with Miami Dade College, and I do a workshop with them. And it's most of the time, it depends on the students I have. I kind of do what I do. I'm doing here. A lot of times, I leave it open as a panel. I explain how comic books work within what they're doing. Um, dismantle all the mysticism. You know, people think like it's like it takes a special pencil to draw comics, or it takes a special pen or desk it doesn't i mean it's a paper and pen in this desk you can start making comics uh, especially now with the internet and the possibilities and what you can work with from there um i work with a lot again like creative writing i've done creative writing workshops um literature programs at the south campus and uh kendall campus in miami dade also at the miami book fair so that's mostly what i've done and uh and explaining like a little bit of the history and the tools and you know the lingo and the vocabulary of comics because i studied it i went to savannah college of art studied sequential art so i know that kind of way of it and then the publishing press side and even business side of it too been doing it for 20 plus years and then you teach actual kids yeah with with me i'm self-taught i've been drawing since i was seven years old i'm 42 right so every and and obviously it predates internet and smartphones so a lot of what i know has been through pure experimentation he still chisels 
<laughs> you know what I mean? So everything, and, and I have students that range from like eight years old to like early 30s. So. Um, That's where I admire them because I, I, I don't know how to teach his kids. Yeah. And so, so a lot of, every, basically everything that I teach them is something that, you know, I've gone through myself. Like I've done the trials, I've done the experiments, so I know it works. You know what I mean? And, and I show them examples. Of, of things that have gone to print, you know, things that have been sold in stores, because I also work with fashion designers and such. So it serves as encouragement that you don't need, you know, uh, an Ivy League education to do this. It, you, what you need is the passion and the love for it, mm-hmm. you know, the ability to, to, to work on your craft without having someone tell you to work on your craft, you know? Yeah. Like, I got, I got kids on the spectrum, on different levels of the spectrum, that are doing things that are, in, like, they impress me. You know what I mean? That, like, at that age, I, was, I could have never, like, put it together to do things the way they're doing it, you know? So it's, it's probably one of the more rewarding uh, experiences of teaching, right? Because I, I would have never pegged myself for being an art teacher. Like, my art teachers hated me in high school, <laughs> right? They hated me because they would try to teach me stuff that I already knew because I did the footwork already. I was doing... I was oh, doing remember when you just take, like, a drawing class again or, or you take something and then be like, this is a 2B, this is a 3B. Like, I know what a pencil is. <laughs> I know what pencils are, man. Like, like, I was doing portraits in middle school. Because I was inspired by that the the Rockwell painting of him yeah, sitting in front of the yeah. I love that painting. So like just based off of what I saw in, in an encyclopedia book, right? I, I started experimenting and I sat in front of the mirror and I did And, it and this is something I, I will say this is that uh, uh, being as somebody that has gone to college and everything else, that's the best take. You are in charge of your own education. If you wanna get better, even if you're going to college, if you're not going to college, I don't care. You're in charge of it. And I think you keep continuing that. You don't wait for a class to teach you something. You go out and find it. Now especially, because now you got phones. In, yeah, and, stuff and like. you know, being creative isn't like any other subject academically that you'll come across in, in, in school, right? Because creativity, regardless of what it is, you could be a carpenter. That's being creative, right? Anything that you can... And and at at any point, if you can take an idea and make it something tangible, you're a creative, right? Your creativity is a living organism. It should never stop developing, right? The moment you stop developing, that's, you're killing yourself, basically, right? At 42, I haven't discovered my own, my definitive art style, Mm -hmm. right? I'm drawing differently today from where I was two months ago. Yeah. Right, because I draw so much, yeah. so the development is always going to continue. There's and no that's plateau. What you want. There's no plateau. That's exactly what you want. Can you draw so You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question. So, so in my head, I like to come up with all these weird, crazy, kind of dumb stories in my head, right? Mm-hmm. That are very fun to think about. And sometimes I might make a Google document about everything for like stories or games I want to make. And yet, I don't know why, but I just can't feel. I just. I'm just not really feeling it to actually make it happen. Mm-hmm. How well, do you deal with that? I well, think what the, the route that you're going is a good one, right? I, I recommend my kids always uh, draw something for minimal, like 20 minutes to an hour a day, every day. So, and, and, and in the writing stance, I'm pretty sure Juan could agree with me, you do the same thing writing-wise, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, you're working out the muscle and getting the ideas out. So that you never suffer what is called artist block. Right? Yeah. Right? That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. That's a, if you're a professional, you show up and work. Yeah. That's all. And, that, and that's what's been told to me when I've, I've talked about artist or, or, or writer's block. Um, you show up and you do the yeah. work. So, so long as you continue that exercise, when the day comes that you're like, okay, I like this. I want to develop this further. I want to see where this goes. You'll be able to sit down at any point of the day, inspired or not, and be able to bang it out. Yeah, because yeah, I used to draw so much in elementary school and in middle school, but I guess sometime during middle school, it just kind of 
stop at some point. I don't even know why. It just kind of fizzled. I mean, ultimately, what do you, what do you want? What do you want? What do you ultimately see? That you'll be creating a video game? That you'll be creating a the comic book? Is, I'm not even sure what I want because I know I want to create something, but I don't know what. Because like, you go and you take it to as far as you can complete it and build it as much as possible. And imagine you're having a conversation with somebody. That's one of the things I do as a writer. If I was telling you the story of like, man, I went down the street and it was like kind of dark, you know, when it's like, you know, nobody's on the street and I went to the 7-Eleven and I went to buy some cigarettes and this guy was in front of me and he kind of was shaking weird and I'm explaining something to you. Same thing, you go and say, well, this is a story and there's this guy and he has this and he does this. Try to do that as much as far as possible, like you're explaining it to somebody and then breaking it down again. And then if you really want to say, again, if you want to get into, I just started reading a book on Hideo Kojima. And one of the books, all he was talking about, uh, this is the guy who cooked uh, Metal Gear Solid, Death Stranding. So he was talking about the whole book is just reviews of books that he liked. And, he re and then he has these notes about like what, how this relates to these projects. So you just feed your brain as you go. And a lot of stuff that he did, he learned on his own. So how do you write for a video game? How do you break down scenes for it? He figured that out on his own. And he figured out his own. And, and I will say the same thing for comics and everything. You know, in movies, there is a certain way of script writing. There in TV, too. I've done that also. Um, there's a certain way of script writing, and that's, you need to learn that. There's programs that will help you do it, like Celtex or like uh, Final Cut uh, Final Cut Pro. No, the Final. I forgot the other script program. I don't use I use Celtex. But, you know, and, and just putting it together. And you take it as far. I have, when you say Google Docs, I have a crap ton of Google Docs and notes. And that's how I work most of the 90% of the time. I just put stuff in there. I'll come back to it. I'm, I'm always spinning different plates. You're never, you should be working on one project, but you have other ideas going on. And I'll sit there going, oh man, what if I did this? Oh man, what if the, and luckily as an artist, I can draw, do a sketch, take a picture of it, put it on my phone and I'll upload it. So. Yeah. On Google Sheets, I have so many like base ideas for games I have on my Google Sheets. So like Try to develop it, but don't go for the full thing. Like develop a yeah. short story, develop a, so, uh, a, a, a short comic book. You know, don't go full on if you don't feel like getting married to it. I will tell you this: a lot of this is discipline. A lot of this is going to be you burning your ass out to get this done, to get out there, because you believe in the idea enough that you want people to see it. Yeah, I, I would start with a with a general idea, right? And then from the idea, develop a story, right? Beginning, middle, end. That from that, you know, you can apply that to a video game structure. Is it a platformer? Is it, you know, a shooter? You know what I mean? Like, you can go from there, but it's, it's development, right? It's got to start somewhere. So the best thing to do is to kind of flush all the, all the ideas out, get it out in, on paper. You can revisit it later. Never throw your scraps out, ever. Mm -hmm. I got a drawer full of just random illustrations that a hunt, I, I can guarantee you, you will revisit. Like, you'll mm -hmm. go back to it, and it's like, it'll be like the missing puzzle piece to like something <laughs> that you're currently working on. I, I, like, I, I, I have a friend who makes, uh, he makes films, he's an independent filmmaker. We actually worked together before, Anthony, Anthony yeah. Jones. So he came by the other day with Julio, and we were talking. And he goes, dude, I'm working on a film right now, but I'm going to finish in May. I'm going to be done. Oh, let's make a short film. I mm -hmm. want to do something over a weekend. I'm going to have like two months off. Let's make a film. Just to come up with an idea. And nice. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I have an opportunity to make a movie. I'm like, what do I do? And I literally have one of my task things. Mm -hmm. I literally put like just ideas. I go, do I have any ideas in there? And I like started scrolling through. I had like 224 ideas. That I just like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, and it went and and like that, and and now it's like about like what do I want to work with? What'll work well with Anthony and him directing and me writing, and see what we can do from there. And when fits the parameters because he wanted to do something small, like yep. two or three actors, and that's it that we can shoot over a weekend. So that's what we. we, we so that's the reason why you have to have those things at the ready because you never know what the opportunity that comes up. You know what? Maybe I should bust out all my old because I still have all my old school era doodles and comics in a file. Actually. There it is. I yeah. should bust that up. Somewhere. And then draw new shit, bro, dude. Get get a sketchbook, doodle every day. Oh, I, I, I I tell people even if you're drawing SpongeBob with his dick out, just fucking yeah. draw it. You know, like, I, I, and I got the perfect example. I did this by hand. I I started as a graffiti artist. I'm an, I'm a native New Yorker, right? So I drew my logo in 1997. I graduated high school that year. Oh, damn. Okay? And it was something that stayed with me to the point where, like, I got to do something with this. Right. 
because I feel like it's it's very uh, self-explanatory. Wild Inks is artistic versatility. I, I made it a point to never put myself in a box or work in one style or just work, you know, in one genre, right? right. So it stayed with me. Now, it, it, like, I incorporated it in 2009. So since 2009, it's been, like, an official thing, like, trademarked and all. You know what I mean? And this was a scrap. There you, go. you know what I'm saying? So it's it's important to keep all that. Those Those are all bullet points that you can always revisit like on your path of creativity yeah because i would either just draw a bunch of bugs just with no context or i'd make these weird comic strips with this kind of weird surreal demented humor dude all of that is going to come into play at some point yeah. Yeah. right you get really good at drawing bugs oh. now later on down the line or you ooh. don't have to i mean look at like one punch man or <laughs> You yeah. know, look at a lot of the, a lot, of, there's a lot of That's stuff that started one really punch rough. Man was a scrap. Yeah. Right? And it, and when he gets that, that dumb idea. look on his face, like, that was... Luckily, that was you'll have that look. problem where somebody comes up with a dump truck of money and says, I want more, and then you say, oh, good, and you gotta keep making more, you know, and if that's how it is, you know. Mm. Another good one, the the original, like, illustration of, of Guts from Berserk, he had an eye patch. Right, his original design that was a scrap, and, it was, and like the the original outline to that story was it was something like twelve pages long. I saw it, right, before Kentaro like refined it and made it like the berserk that we know today. Mm-hmm. So hold on to everything. You you never know when all that's gonna come in handy. We got like five more minutes or something like that. So yeah. So I just want to say something real quick because I struggled a lot with motivation. I found out I had ADHD. So if you have literally trouble getting started, where you're like looking. Productivity books and stuff like that. I would recommend therapy for you because you never know. Just in case, because for the longest time, I wanted to be an artist at 16, and I had like a, a shitty art teacher, and she said, "Well, you're never gonna be an artist. Look at how you draw." I'm like, "Whoa, wow, that's, yeah, man, that's stuck with me." Forever. I would drop kicker in the fucking wow. face. I was a kid back then, and I've been raised respectfully. Man, so I just went, "All right." I so, feel, so I feel sorry just, for you. My art teacher was pretty good, actually. Yeah. So, man, literally, if you have problems just starting, just go to therapy. Is my recommendation because it took me so long to figure out I have an HC. Yeah. And then that's it. And my second question for you guys. So I noticed you guys are in a group, you're in a scene, you're in a studio, and that's something I want. Like part of my dream is I want to create with other people. Mm-hmm. So how do you get into a scene? How do you get into a studio and things like that? Show up to drink things. and draws, conventions, the drink and conventions, right, the, these kind of things. Yeah. The, the, you know, the you know, sometimes personalities, you know, you're gonna yeah, like you just vibe there's with. guys that you vibe with that you can hang out with. Uh, me and Kenny met through a mutual friend that was a tattoo artist. Yep. And we ended up working in the same uh, shop for a long time yeah. and then from there we made the studios at the new shop and everything else um and you get along we have the same sense of humor we get everything else sometimes you will i mean there's some guys that uh, again they're my friends you know they have the personality of drywall but uh you know but that's their personality and yeah. so you take it in stride you know yeah. there's times that doesn't mean there's no love now no love there we have a lot of love for each other but doesn't mean like you know you're high-fiving every day and 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 what it is is that I've seen it in the comic book shop and especially in the, in, the, in the comic book publishing house. You can be very different from your background politically, ideologically, religiously, everything. But then you're like, that issue of the Hulk was pretty fucking cool. Yeah. And like, yeah, that was pretty cool. Hulk. And you bond over that. Yeah. So as artists, we bond over, oh, that's cool, way more than we look at like our differences or how we are, you know, brought up and everything. So my, my problem with networking is, it just it feels icky to me because I... I do want to make a genuine connection, but at the same time, if I go with the intention of like, hey, I want to hook up with you because I want to make something, it feels like I'm trying to, like, I'm using you as a means to an end, not an end right. of itself. You so got. Like, like, how do you balance being like, hey, I want to work with you, but I also think. Temper it with you. kindness, temper sure. it with interest. You, you'll you be amazed what a coffee can do, you know, like just bringing somebody a cup of coffee or or something. But the other thing is, is that you have to get over icky. Yeah, yeah you just. You got to get over icky. Get There's over been a bunch of times that I look back and if we're. I could say I have a regret, and I don't have too many, luckily, uh, is the times I wasn't a little bit more assertive. Because a lot of times, there are people that need you. They need your work. They need your... This world has room for you. There's a lot of room in this world mm-hmm. for you and your story. They need you. They just don't know. A lot of times, too, when people say, oh, they're dicks, and they just don't want me to include me, or they're not, they don't know what you want, man. And if you don't say what you want, they're not going to include you. Mm-hmm. And now that takes a group effort. There's a lot of times we've traveled together, 
where we're all sharing the same hotel room and smelling each other's feet <laughs> because we want to all go to this one big con. We're going to go to New York Comic Con or we want to go to C2E2 in Chicago or something like that. And it costs a lot of money. And so we say, all right. So that means sometimes we cover each other. It's like, hey, I got you a sandwich. Or, hey, go go to the booth and I'll go get breakfast. Yeah. Or, you know, like, or I'll do Kenny. Like, I, I don't know how many times I've, I've been hung over the con. And, yeah. and I'm like, dude, open the booth. <laughs> <laughs> And, I, and I'll show up extra early, set everything up, mm. you know, he can come in an hour later, you know what I mean? Yeah, and if he but wants to leave early or anything it, else. It's, or, all those, it's, it's those things that, you or know. there's a sock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, you know, build the camaraderie, right? <laughs> it starts with a common bond, right? Mm. We're, all, we're all nerds, we're all artists, right? right? Mm. But we have very different styles, but... There's a little bit of the next guy's style in all of us, right? Because it's like this, this, like this is something that there's always going to be something that I admire that Juan does that I don't do, right? Vice versa, or the next guy, or the next guy, or the next guy. Mm-hmm. But I'll take what Juan does, a little bit of what Juan does, and incorporate it into what I do, mm-hmm. and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's the osmosis. You, you have to be very, very malleable all the rest of your life, where everybody else sets in their ways. And you're like, I'm old, fuck it, I, that's all I am. No. As an artist, you have to remain malleable and be able to, like, okay, think outside the box, think in this term, think in this way, think in this way, learn a new skill, mm-hmm. learn a new ability. I can never sit there and be like, I'm not going to do, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I got to always be open to the next thing because that's how an artist changes. <coughs> it's been proven all successful artists have a lot of work. Not all of it's of number one. We all know, like, Picasso and like Guernica or one of those paintings, but we don't know that he painted. You know, he painted ceramics for years. Mm-hmm. No one really talks about that. Ceramics are worth millions, but that's one of the things he did because that's another thing. So you have to be malleable and you always have to be ever changing. You think about artists that you follow, people that you care about, how much work have they done, right. and that they're always doing something new. I look at artists like Ashley Wood or Sam Keith, and they're always doing something new, and I want to so like, always watch it. So like even the best artist has a few duds. Of yeah, course. don't of ever course. be don't ever be afraid to suck. One hundred percent. Listen, have you ever watched a, a manga artist like do a live drawing and talk about his work, dude? They have the lowest self esteem. Well, yeah, but yeah. It, there's it, a, they're there's like a, their own. If, if you ever critics. get a chance uh, online, there's a thing called Man Ben. We we'll look it up, and it's uh, some of them are translated on YouTube. Um, it's Urasawa. Did you ever see the Mon Bens with me? Yes. The, 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 the translated. So it's Urasawa. He's a huge, he made monster. He did a bunch of different 21st century boys, a bunch of stuff. Oh, manga, crazy. yeah. So it's him going around with a camera crew interviewing other manga artists. And so they'll sit there and they'll like put a camera on a manga artist. And it's always like the last day before a deadline where they have to put something in. So you see these guys working. One woman, I remember, I forgot her name, but <coughs> it was so impressive that she was drawing she fell asleep while she was drawing. She was oh crosshatching. And her eyes closed and she kept crosshatching while she was doing it. Oh and woke back up. And then, and then, and then, he, and he's the, or so I was asking her, like, did you, did you know you went to sleep? And he goes, yeah, probably. You know? And so it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great series of, uh, of videos. Uh, some are translated, some are not. A lot of them are on YouTube. They're amazing because I, I, every time I watch them, it's like I get super, super inspired. Um, but they, they, they talk about a lot of that idea of like just keeping up and being good, you know, mm-hmm. just keeping up and it's hard and they will always come down on it. But you got to suck. Right. The best thing I ever heard was a friend of mine, two brothers that are prop makers. They said to me, you know, my piece of shit is you're better than your perfect nothing. Right. A lot of people to not look bad, make nothing. Right. They don't do shit. So what's the, what's the point of that? Hey, it's better to have a piece of shit. Than nothing at all. Than nothing at all. No, we, so, because I heard that it's better to be out because it's better to be angry at something than to just feel nothing. True. Like yeah. that's why really bad movies are better than just boringly average movies because at least at least it makes you feel something. Yeah. True. Okay. And then my last question is uh, for networking online. Uh, do you have any tips on that? Because. Uh, is it like you just shoot a text like you build up your like Instagram or whatever and you just like hey I appreciate your work and yeah then, yeah you know that does wonders yeah. but back and forth in any and anyway there's people that have been able to make 
friends with online. And it's funny because we'll be friends for years. There are guys that I knew since 05, 07. Mm -hmm. And I didn't meet them until I went to San Diego Comic Con. Mm -hmm. Or I went to Emerald City. And they're like, hey, we're both going to be there? Cool. And it's fucking weird. Because, like, dude, I've known you for 20 years. And it's the first time we've talked. So... Because there's our people with the and you catch that same vibe, yeah. and it's sometimes you know sometimes the exchange is a high five, what's up, cool, awesome, and that's it. And other times you're gonna have a you know you'll have a couple of beers for the rest of the night and talk shit until mm-hmm. we more hours, you know. But the best thing is the, the be open. Yeah, uh, right. an open hand gets more water than a closed fist. Yeah, no, no egos. No ego. E- egos cuts you off from every opportunity like that could potentially yeah, so fall your back. Hey, there's a chance. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody yeah. likes to hear, hey, that looks fucking cool. Yeah. yeah, everybody likes that. Like, like for example, uh, to like the situation that Juan just explained happened to me. Uh, the last Florida SuperCon. Yeah, I had a I had a client that would that would you know order artwork from me via my Etsy shop all the time, but he's an aspiring writer, right. right? He's a fantasy writer, so he would DM me via Instagram like some ideas for new characters and so on and so forth and then he would commission me to illustrate the character so he's got like a physical representation of what he's describing in his book he's been a client of mine literally like six years six years i met him for the very first time florida supercon 2019 okay because he came down from lakeland and he was in cosplay a cosplay that he commissioned me to design for him no kidding. Okay. So, cool, so like, you know, these things are real. You got to keep yourself open. You know, don't put yourself in a box and block yourself off from right. from anything that could potentially like, you know, help you along the way. Right, right, right. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. well, last question. Last one. All right. Um so I so there's something I've been thinking that how do you network up with people who have similar interests because the kind of stuff that I draw when I draw is really unlike anyone that I know because of how kind of weird and surreal and obscure it is. Like, one time I did something as a joke, right? Like, one time... Wait. All right, one time in a high school art club, right, there was this girl who was sitting next to me, right? And we each took turns drawing a body part, right? Because I was drawing some really, like, Peter, dumb little Peter Griffin doodle. But she was drawing like a more well-drawn anime girl, but we each added a body part and it looked like this amazing but horrible monstrosity. <laughs> mm-hmm. But well, that was just a joke. But if I wanted to go serious, right, there's not many people who share my interests who live around me. So like, what can I do? Man, uh, one outlet is to probe social media. You know, probe social media, follow hashtags. People, stuff. you know, you're not wearing your artwork. So, yeah. like, that's the thing. So, people don't know about your artwork until they see it. Yeah. So, you got to get it out there. And the people that appreciate it, they're going to they're gonna come up to you and appreciate it. Yeah. And you got to get just get, you know, that's a good If it's in your head, it's worth shit. It's, it's when it's out there that it gets any kind of value. True. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to have to wrap it up yeah, from dude. here. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I appreciate it. If you guys need anything, what booth are you? I'm in 912. And I'm in 914. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you so much. All right, All right man. Wonderful. Hey, what's going on, folks? So this weekend was Otaku Fest, and hopefully I'll have a recording from the panel you probably hear before this or after this. So um, I've been able to have a van the whole weekend because I was driving around stuff for the shop and everything, and it's I can't admit it's fun to have a car again. I've been a mover guy right now, and I share my my girlfriend's car sometimes, and uh, so. It's kind of fun to have a van again and have tunes and fucking drive around. I don't know why. That's like my fucking thing, you know? I forgot how much of a driving animal I am. Um, and you just start thinking, man. And you just start driving. And yesterday I got out early from the con. John was covering. I went out. And then I came back in. And I was driving home and um, able to take the highway. That was nice. And uh, this old fucking dude just fucking passes by. Seems like he had beef with another gentleman in his pickup truck and he's just giving the finger to fucking everybody and to the guy then it was like to the other car then to me then the guy behind him and 
Meanwhile, he's driving recklessly as fuck. And I, I mean, this is average Miami behavior. You know, it's like if you really, if your monocle fell out of your head with that one, you know, it was like, oh wait, there's more, kind of thing. You know, I never fucking ever. You know, I laugh more than anything, but shit. But I saw the anger on this guy's face, and I'm talking like high blood pressure, red faced anger. And I guess I, it just reminded me of how much, how fucking stupid people are. And it's funny too, because you talk about like wh- the reason you can get angry is because their stupidity rules you, not like your intellect rules them. Unless there's a, a, a type of manipulation. And I think that's the thing that gets me sometimes. I think sometimes I look at some of these fucking people and I see how they enact or, or, or uh, don't act on certain issues. And they just sit on their asses, in other words. And uh, I just don't know. I don't know. I, I look at it and it's just like, and, and, and you're living by their rules. You're living by stupidity. You're not living by your intellect, your, your virtue, your anything. They're fucking jerk offs and you're living by the laws that they don't vote through. You're living through the fears that they have. You're living through the bigotry that they have, um, the slowness. And I would say it's the equivalent of a fucking line, you know, it's equivalent of like when you're in a fucking line and it's like, you know, you're ordering something and it's like, all right, dude, like you've been in a line for a while. You should know what you're going to order should be ready to go um the fuck man you know and that's the same kind of thing here it's like we're on a line and i have to be as fast as the dickhead in front of me and now i have to fucking put up with the shit of other fucking stupid people and you know there's times too that i kind of like i know i'm being a fucking mean asshole i'm looking at people and i'm just looking at it from a prism of that like this fuckhead this fuckhead this fuckhead and not to say i can't point it and say i'm a fuckhead too but there's a lot of things that i just see the inefficiencies and the shittiness of people and we're that's the that's the 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 the, the you know they live by the lowest hanging fruit that's how they see things that's how they look at things that's how they think things work and that's it and and I gotta live by it too. It's aggravating. It's it's insulting. It's one of those things that kind of pisses me the fuck off a little bit more every day. <laughs> and I hear the people's stupidity, and I hear it because I, I I go okay example. A lot of times, like when you look at the political process or COVID or anything that's going on, you know, you look at the analyzation of what people are doing, and and really what you figure is that the narrative like people have followed the narrative of covid followed the narrative of everything that's going on and they their opinion is what's on the tv and they just repeat it they're not really thinking they're not thinking of anything about it how strange a lot of it the setup is how people are putting everything together i mean the fact that you have a fucking vaccine and i don't know if it was a polio vaccine and i had to take it three times in a year I kind of question the effectiveness of the vaccine, wouldn't I? Um, that's what I'm seeing, like, in a lot of these things. Let's get off the vaccine, then, politically. A lot of people look at it like, oh, because people want money, and this and this and that. Like, I ask people sometimes, like, you know, always they have that grouch about welfare. And one of the things that happened was this year is, like, I think welfare went down. Like, as much as there was people on welfare, a lot of, it's mostly new populations. Some people got off it. Maybe they started businesses. Maybe they started something. Maybe with the stimulus packages, something. But that's a big fucking deal. In the in the height of all this shit, in the height of inflation, in the height of everything, but people don't like that. And when you tell them, it's like, oh, you know, why should a single mom with a kid have to be given of a? All right, take it away from them. But you get to take you you get to go over there and tell them that they don't get it. Go, just finish the job and kick the kid in the chest. Why don't you fucking do that? See, a lot of people don't want to fucking do that. They know what they they don't mind being cruel as long as it's not them doing it. And that to me is stupidity. That's that's not having empathy. That's being dumb to other people's needs and emotions. And I think a lot of it is just there. And there's people that take these insidious 
love of being like you can tell they almost take pleasure in being an asshole and I'm like this is the shit I gotta I gotta live with this is the people I gotta follow this is the people that I gotta fucking tune into fucking ridiculous man fucking ridiculous so I don't know I just see a lot of that shit and I, I, I don't know. I, I, and, as, and what bugs me is I find live on your own and do your own stupidity and your bullshit. Hey, I'm all for it. I, I live by that. But now I got to live by it, too. I got to live by your bullshit. Yeah. I call it bullshit. I call it garbage. Oh, well, maybe it's the coffee talking. Yeah, that's the podcast. Hopefully you guys got through it all. You guys enjoyed it. It's not me being a fucking incredulous asshole. <laughs> it probably is. I don't know. I, I, I just do my thing and post it up. That's all I can do. I just make art and then have you guys figure it out. Uh, thank you guys for listening. As always, you can find me at fwakata.com, F-W-A-C-A-T-A, and at fwakata on all the social media. You can find this a podcast on almost every podcast. Thanks, thanks to Anchor. Uh, what else? This weekend, I got the Goblin Market going on over at Goblin's Heist. Check out Goblin's Heist at gob- thegoblinsheist.com. Uh, we have a Discord and everything else. I've been posting stuff on there. Uh, what else? Also, uh, 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 I don't know what else there is there to do. Uh, yeah, there's just a bunch of stuff. I'm working on the anthology, posting stuff on Substack and on Patreon. If you want to support this podcast, you can go on Patreon and be a pr- supporter. Also, you can go on uh, Substack and be a supporter. Support in some way. Throw some money my way. Whatever. There goes another snort. Jesus. Uh, we got a lot more coming up right now. I got to finish up some other stuff. And yeah, I got to get back to work. So thank you guys for tuning in. Enjoy as always. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Laters. Be good. That's it. That's it. That's it. With your arms now. That's it. That's it. Move.